and welcome back. This is the second video of the A8AA Plus series. And uh, the first video was about building the base. Uh, it's right here and um, it's pretty much done. It went really smooth, no problems, except for one little broken um, linear bearing. And well, it was broken. And uh, the rest that I had, uh, they secreted quite a lot of rust when I greased them up. But apart from that, uh, everything went smooth. And in this video, I want to get to the point where we have the gantry, the X and Z axis, right up to the point where we can start to do the wiring. Um, let's see how good we get there. And let's hope that everything just goes as smoothly as the last thing did, because that was really, really nice. Let's see. I thought before we put this together we have a look at the extruder itself and I took it apart as far as it is necessary and um, well at the beginning I said that this was nothing special but it's actually nothing to sneeze at uh, it's it's really adequate um, in fact for the price of 140 euros I wouldn't have expected it to be this good so what we have here is a full-size stepper um, on a single gear extruder. Um, there are geared extruders which have um, a reduction gear, but this one doesn't have it. Uh, but we do have um, guides for the filament that go very close to the roller and to the gear. Uh, which is very good, especially when you want to uh, 3D print something like Ninja Flex, TPU, and some of the, well, uh, more, well, complicated um, filaments that will flex themselves. Um, anything rigid you can print with a, with a Bowden tube, but if you want to do a good job printing TPU, then, uh, well, a direct drive extruder is a fine thing. Also, we get um, a throat with a uh, PTFE lining, so this is not an all-metal throat, which is also good. Uh, the uh, heatsink on the back of here is very, very small, but the uh, fan that comes with it uh, will go right in front of it. And it actually says on the stepper, um, caution hot, because what they actually do is they use the stepper um, to take up the heat that is um, coming over from your um, heat block. So you dump some of the heat in the cooling block, uh, but since it will get to the aluminium part holding the is that even aluminium it looks like plastic let's have a look yep it scratches it's plastic so this should be uh, a sort of a form of plastic that can sink the heat um, i can see that there's some more ptfe in here at the throat so um considering all that i would say that this here is um the main heatsink for the heat block 
uh, which is pretty small. So um, always make sure that this is clean or your throat will be getting too warm and your filament will start melting inside the throat before it gets to the heat block. Apart from that, the heat block is really poor quality. Uh, the thread in here um, does not look very well. Uh, it looks like when they put it together, they put too much tension on the nozzle, uh, which is never a good thing. Um, but I think we can work with this. Uh, when I put these together, I always make sure that the nozzle does not fully touch the heat block. Um, because you want to make sure that your nozzle and the throat um, match up 100%. Uh, so they can actually have a tight fit so none of your filament when it's melted uh, oozes out um, between the two. So if this is sitting right on your throat, on your heat block, um, it can become slightly crooked because you never know how flat the surface is. So if you just screw this in and leave like half a millimeter of distance between your heat block and the nozzle, then the nozzle can sit right on the uh, throat. And uh, that makes for a better connection and it makes sure that you don't ooze out any filament here. Yeah, but apart from that, that's it. Um, it is a pretty good extruder after all. Um, I was actually planning to not even put this in the printer and uh, directly go to a TiVo Titan, but I think we could try this out. This is uh, not half bad. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd show it to you before I put it in. So for those of you who were closely watching, um, uh, the gantry is on and there were two things that you just didn't see me do. And it was because, well, my two cameras just pulled some sort of joint denial of service attack against me and uh, I lost some footage. Uh, so the first thing that you didn't see me do was actually put the uh, x-axis belt on the x-axis assembly um, that wasn't so much of a problem only that the 3d printed part that holds the belt um, wasn't really solid and had a had a uh, break in it which i fixed using some uh, some super glue and the second thing that you obviously didn't see me do was uh, assembling this whole frame that means putting the x-axis assembly on the z-axis gantry and, and setting the whole thing up. But it wasn't too bad on this printer. Uh, it works fairly easy because you, you can stand up the, the two towers on your desk and then you just align the x-axis assembly over the steppers and everything just falls into place somehow. Uh, what you then need to do is uh, you need to finally adjust the width of the x-axis assembly um, once you mount it to the 3D printer and when you do that you must make sure that the gantry is all the way on the bottom or all the way on the top because you don't want to have the load on your uh, rods because you could bend them. Um, that's the only thing that is really important here. Um, Looking at it right now, uh, this is pretty solid. Um, I took my my 
angle measuring device and I measured the angles between the, the top, the x-axis and the table and uh, the angles between the base and the z-axis gantry and these things are perfectly parallel and the other things are perfectly 90 degrees which is good and um, yeah I can I'm just going to continue putting this stuff together um, uh, and uh, I hope that the cameras don't act up now. Uh, I might be having problems with the camera just because this thing is getting so big now. So I'll I'll focus on the things that I'm working on. Uh, apart from that, it keeps on growing. Right, so the frame is complete, um, all the mechanics are in place, everything checks out pretty much okay. Um, I didn't run into any real issues, uh, maybe apart from the fact that when I put one of the rods into the linear bearing, I pushed out two of the ball bearing uh, balls. Um, that's unfortunate and well maybe I could have put them back in but there are eight races in here and I don't know from which one um, the balls came and they pretty much checked out when I moved them so I left it the way it was. Um, that's also one of the reasons why you want to grease these up because if you push out one of the balls from the bearing, uh, it will be stuck to the grease and you're not going to lose it. Uh, yeah, apart from that, uh, this is still a really nice build. Um, the Anet A8 um, Plus is a fairly large printer. Um, it, it goes together well. I, I, I'm quite impressed with that. Um, but of course, I wouldn't say this is a beginner's printer because you can actually run into so many problems building this thing. I am going to continue uh, with the electronics now, uh, but uh, this will be the end of this video because I want to keep them short. And uh, I, I just want to get to the point where this thing starts moving. Um, that being said, I have decided not to replace this extruder for now and not mod it uh, because quite frankly it seems pretty good uh i know that i'm will probably be doing something uh to the print bed because this doesn't have a metal surface uh it comes with a, a glass pane and uh, it just has the clips to hold it down and um, if you run into your print this can start moving across uh, the print bed and make your prints look bad stuff like that uh, but from from where it stands right now um, this is a really nice printer. I also like the fact that the main board on this side here is uh, very much accessible. Uh, it's a really good idea that you can take the cover off um, because when I'm going to assemble this I will have a really really easy time um, getting all the wires plugged in and getting everything checked out uh, before I turn it on the first time. So it's a really good idea <laughs> and um, Probably just a coincidence, um, but I had the same way of mounting my uh, mainboard on the Big Bad Robin. So uh, I 
think I still think that's a good idea to have it uh, right here at the side or in any position where you can easily get to it um, that is really really good the only thing that I don't really like right now is that the um, SD card is uh, behind the gantry uh, it could be worse than that but um, not a lot so I'm gonna continue working on this and um, you'll see it when the next video comes out thank you very much for watching and uh, bye bye